I, uh, it was stuck in lock mode. Uh, I mean, really stuck. That the holding the button thing down that you find on the on the internet doesn't work. Uh, because what happened? This switch here. It uh, it wasn't being engaged properly inside the mechanism here that has the uh, the hold switch. And <clears throat> it's a little piece of metal that engages the switch, the little notch of the switch. And if it slips out of place, you could flip this thing over as many times as you want. It's not going to do anything. Uh, I got this open simply by using a spudger and going real gently around and uh, you can go too far but you really can't but odds are you're gonna run in all kinds of gunk and you know dirt and grime and all kinds of stuff whatever whatever lent was in your pockets or whoever's pocket this happened to be in uh, yeah so rub this with clean this with a rubbing alcohol later uh, it, this switch here is attached to a uh, an FPC, and it's a flexible printed circuit. And you can lift it up a little bit, and there's only two wires printed on that little f flexible cable. I don't know if you can see that. If I short out the contacts on the top of the switch here. I can get it to engage. What that tells me is that the the, the cable works, and that the ca that the cable hasn't been uh, severed. Yeah, let's see if I can reproduce that. There we go. You see the lock is on now. I mean, I mean, yeah. If it's stuck permanently in lock mode, you need a spudger. You could use like a miniature screwdriver set, like if you have a flat. Like a, one of these little sets here with the really small flathead screwdriver on it, and you're really careful. Yeah, it could be done, but if you have the proper tools, you won't have any any gouge marks on the plastic or on the outside of the enclosure. Because what you ideally you don't want you want it to look like you've never been in there. That's the whole point of doing a repair is you don't want anyone knowing you've been in there you know it shouldn't look like you've been in there you know living there and watching TV on the couch you know it shouldn't <laughs> it shouldn't look like you've been there at all you know leave it as you find it kind of thing like going to Yellowstone Park there is zero damage whatsoever okay so if you've done it right, it should look like that when you're done. Anyway, so if that's the problem and that the switch hasn't been engaging properly, you make sure your switch is in the unlocked position. Make sure that this is in the unlocked position and make sure it's fully seated so that when you do reattach the, uh, the cover plate here, it simply is back and engaged and uh, simply pressing okay so so there's that that's one thing fixed I wish they could all be that easy uh, the other thing that was wrong with it was the internal uh, connector here uh, the fix for that <laughs> I took a handful of rubbing alcohol, smeared it in there, and took a toothbrush and just rubbed back and forth, watching it and then blowing it out with uh, compressed air. And, uh, yep, done deal. I took a few tries, but I can assure you that thing is spotless, spicky, spinning there. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, you could verify it by dipping like some tissue, uh, not tissue paper. Do not use tissue paper. Coffee filter paper, and you could slide it in there like you were cleaning an old Nintendo game. You could do it like that. And that would clean the contacts nice and easy and safely. Okay, but there's no reason to take screws out or, you know, to take off the bottom or anything like that. No, it's right here. And it should look pristine when you're done with it. There should be no scratches other than uh, wear and tear from whoever had it before you. Good night, ladies and germs.